Today we're looking at a video from Peter and Pete, who along with being flat earthers have some other rather uh, interesting concepts, such as there's no oxygen in air, water's not made of hydrogen and oxygen, red, green and blue light doesn't make white, carbon dating doesn't work, and many more. However, personally as a photographer, it was their claims that RGB doesn't make white that really caught my attention. I would first like to take a second though to kill Planner Walk for introducing me to this channel. Not because of anything specific that they talk about, simply because the music that they use for their intro is the same music that I use in my videos. And this is their intro. I now can't listen to my own outro music without having a nervous twitch. So, thanks for that planner walk. Yeah, sorry about that. I heard your outro and thought, where had I heard that before? Anyway, let's get into their claims that RGB doesn't make white, which they address by looking at a few other YouTube videos. One which projects red, green and blue circles of light onto a board, where the circles intersect, produce different colours, and in the centre, where the three circles overlap, you get white. Where is the most hottest part? Oh, which would be the hottest part on would the be board? The hottest part of the board. Well, that's a good question, though. In the centre, in the, the white area, you've got all three lights are merging. Merging together. Together. Absolutely. So that's so where the light would be brightest, brightest and hottest. That the colours are being washed out simply by the heat. Of the, the light. Of the the light. By the intensity of the light. Absolutely, of course. That's yeah. all. They also look at a video from the Slow Mo Guys who show a close up of a TV screen to prove that screens only use red, green, and blue pixels to produce all the colours it displays, including white. However, Peter and Pete's argument against this was. White obviously will seriously damage your eyesight if you're looking at it yeah, all the time. Basically. Whereas black is probably more. Uh, what's the word? More friendly, friendly to, your eyes. to your eyes. And the reason why, in our opinion, that is, is because all you're seeing is more intensity from the LEDs. And more intensity so that it's washing out the colour. RGB. The RGB. Yeah. So we can, ex we can account for how white is produced on our Google homepage simply because the voltage that's going through the circuitry of the screen okay, is washing out the colour mm. from the RGB. Yeah, basically, yeah. And finally, they look at a video from the Physics Girl, who demonstrates that green and red make yellow by spinning a red and green spinner, which then appears yellowish. To which Peter and Pete's response was... One thing, because she demonstrated it with her spinning wheel. Spinning wheel. But these bananas aren't moving. They're not moving. That's the big problem. Absolutely. When you look at a yellow Are object... We... so. Do we actually have to say that this banana, these bananas are made up of red and green and the red and green are all moving over the surface of the banana? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, now, to we... make the yellow. This is where I think Peter and Pete are getting confused about how light works. Light is electromagnetic radiation and it can vary in wavelengths. The human eye has receptors in the back of it which can react to certain wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, of which we have three types. S-cone, M-cone, and L-cone. The radiation within the wavelength ranges that these can detect is what we know as visible light. The S-cones react to the shorter wavelengths in that range, M-cones react more to the wavelengths in the middle, and, you've guessed it, the L-cones react to the longer wavelengths. Now, when light enters our eye, it will trigger our receptors based on its wavelength. So, for example, 450 nanometer light will cause a very strong reaction from our S-band receptors, but barely any reaction from our M and L bands. Our brain can then measure these responses and determine the, the light we are seeing is blue. Whereas if the light were 490 nanometers, it would cause equal reactions from both the S and M bands with a slightly lower response from the L band and our brain can determine that this is a teal colour. So our brains are able to determine what colour an object is based on the response levels from the three different types of receptors. 
These can also lead people to have color blindness problems if the receptors don't function properly. And if you'd like to learn more about how light works, or science in general, then I'd recommend today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a learning platform for maths, science, and computing, with a very user-friendly interface and interactive animations to make the concepts much easier to understand. The classes are very relaxed, fun, and engaging, whilst being very bite-sized. You can come and go as you please as well, so it will fit around even very busy schedules, and their topics are for all education levels, so that anyone can expand their knowledge further. And they cover a vast array of topics, from algebra and geometry to astrophysics and relativity. For example, I'm still continuing to progress through their scientific thinking course, and I actually happen to be on the section about light at this very moment. And I'm especially looking forward to their lesson on quantum light, because I feel this is an area that I could learn a few new things. And it's available as an app as well, so that you can learn on the go. And if you feel you could learn something from these classes, then you can grab a 30-day free trial by visiting brilliant.org forward slash Dave McKeegan, and the first 200 of you to do so will get 20% off when purchasing an annual subscription as well. Now, you will note that within the visible light spectrum, there is no white light. There are only colours ranging from violet to red, with every variation in between. Sunlight, for example, is a wide range of electromagnetic radiation, which contains not only all wavelengths of visible light, but also the ranges beyond it, like ultraviolet and infrared. This will cause equal responses from our S, M, and L band receptors, so our brain is unable to distinguish any one particular color, and so it just appears colorless, i.e. white. When this light passes through water droplets, it can refract and separate out into the individual colors, which is how we get rainbows. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Planner Walk. Yeah, I'm just addressing it now, actually. Ah, sure thing, come on over. So just to drop in for a few seconds, I'm sorry for interrupting you there, Professor Dave. I wanna talk about the banana stuff. So when talking about why bananas are yellow, Peter and Pete said some rather silly stuff like this. Do we actually have to say that this banana, these bananas are made up of red and green and the red and green are all moving over the surface of the banana? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so they've got a bit of a misconception there about how we perceive light. I wish I could say that I was shocked. Because of the physics girl demonstration, they seem to assume that we think that we perceive yellow because of moving red and green. So the misconception here I think comes from them not realizing how we actually see yellow when you are spinning something that has red and green on it. You see, our eyes and brains don't actually have the ability to process light instantaneously. And because of this, any image that we see is from the light that our eyes have received over a period of time. Now if that image changes over the period of time, what your eyes are going to be seeing is all the light that went into your eyes during that period of time. So if it starts out as green going into your eyes and hitting a spot on the retina, and then red going into your eyes and hitting the same spot on the retina, your brain will perceive that to be yellow. Now another way for two different colours, let's say red and green, to hit the same spot on the retina, is for the source of those colours to be really close together. So in the case of a TV screen or computer monitor, the colours are just so close together that they activate the cones in the same location. Thus the brain perceives the red and the green from a TV screen as yellow. Now keep in mind I'm talking about this in the context of mixing colours, not so much in the case of a banana being yellow because bananas actually do reflect yellow light. Anyway, back to you Dave, thank you for letting me interrupt you. Thanks Planner Walk. Yes, when light hits an object, some wavelengths will appear to be reflected while others will be absorbed. This is what determines the colour that we perceive the object to be. So, no, the banana is not red and green. The banana reflects the wavelengths of light around the yellow part of the spectrum. This wavelength triggers reactions from both our red and green receptors, so our brain can work out that the banana is yellow. Now, while Peter and Pete make the claim that we're not TVs and we don't project light, camera sensors actually work very similar to our eyes. Photosites in a camera sensor can't actually distinguish colours, a plane sensor is actually monochromatic. 
Colour sensors have to have a colour filter array in front of them, usually a Bayer filter, which splits the photocytes into either red, green or blue. So shining a yellow light onto a sensor will allow photons into both the red and green photocytes, and the camera's computer will read this information and assign that particular pixel in the image as being yellow. We can also disprove Peter and Pete's claim about white light merely being hot light and that the colors are being washed out by using an RGB LED light panel such as this. This can produce any color of the rainbow by mixing red, green, and blue LEDs, just like on a TV screen. But this gives me the facility to manually dial in the brightnesses for the red, green, and blue pixels. So I can have the red light all the way down at 1%, and it's incredibly dim. If I then switch on the blue LEDs at 1%, we get a very, very faint purple cast. If I now turn on the greens at 1%, we get white light. This light is not remotely bright at all. If I turn any one of these color channels up even brighter, we get a shift in the color, even though the light is now brighter. With all the channels at 1%, I can look straight into this light with the naked eye and clearly see the individual red, green, and blue LEDs. I can see them because the light from them is hitting different parts of my eye and so are triggering different receptors. But if I point the light away from me, then all the red, green, and blue light are going to be reflecting to the same spots in my eye and so triggering equal responses from each of the receptors in that spot. It's not that the colors are being washed out, it's merely that the brain can't distinguish any one particular color, and so we're seeing white. It's the it, worst thing to look at. It's the worst thing to look at on your screen, and that's white. White, white obviously, will seriously damage your eyesight if you're looking at it yeah, all the time. Basically. Whereas black is probably more, uh, what's the word, more friendly, friendly to, your the, eyes. to your eyes. And the reason why, in our opinion, that is, is because all you're seeing is more intensity from the LEDs. In more intensity so that it's washing out the colour. RGB. The RGB. Now, to be fair, Peter and Pete aren't far off the mark when they start talking about black backgrounds of websites being easier on the eye than white backgrounds, and that it is to do with the voltages, but their conclusions are wrong. Screens can display millions of different colours, but they've only got red, green, and blue lights in them. And those lights can't change color. They can only change brightness. You can't make black light or gray light. The display will mix the red, green, and blue lights together to produce a particular color, and it will vary the brightnesses of those lights mixed against the black background in order to change what shade of that color we see. So when we see gray, for example, the red, green, and blue are all coming on at the same strength as each other, so it's producing white light. But in keeping the lights quite dim, we're only seeing a very faint white light against a black background, and so we perceive gray. As the brightness for those lights increases, the white light becomes more and more apparent until eventually it completely offsets the black and we can only see the white. So yes... Dark colored backgrounds are less strenuous on our eyes because the light from the screen is not as intense. And subsequently, it's not having to draw as much power because the lights don't have to be as bright. But the screen's not displaying a gray light. The screen is producing a very faint white light against the black background. And it's producing the faint white light by having the red, green, and blue lights for a single pixel all at the same brightness. It could be argued that true white light is a mixture of every color in the spectrum. However, we're able to reproduce white light using only red, green, and blue because those are the colors that our photoreceptors have evolved to detect. So a big thanks to Planner Walk for bringing this video to my attention and for helping me address it. If you aren't familiar with Planner Walk's work, I highly recommend checking them out. I've left a link to the channel below, as well as a link for Brilliant.org to get that fantastic 20% discount. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.